Good day everyone. Hope you're having a blessed day. I just want to share with you a few thoughts on uh, Ephesians chapter 6. A well known passage, but we'll just go right down it. It's verse 10. It's about the armour of God, but I just want to look at a few thoughts that the Lord has shown me and I want to share it with yourself. Because I was weak for a few months or up and weak. But we need to be strong in Christ, not in our own strength. So it says this, Ephesians 6 verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we're just going to go down verse by verse and we'll see how far we get. That word finally means henceforth. Henceforth, from this day forward, Paul the Apostle is saying to the Ephesian church, after all he's told them, that they're saved by grace, that they're his workmanship, that they're chosen, predestined. Know who you are in Christ. Child of God, you need to know who you are in Christ. So he's telling them here, be strong in the Lord, not in our own strength, not in our flesh, but we're to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That word power means gratis, means figure. And we'll see as we go on, we need a bit of vigor in Christ. We need to have a vigor in him. You know, strength to be strong is our duty. To be weak is our sin. When we're in the flesh, we're weak. And then we are prone to sin. To be strong in the Lord is to trust. To be strong in the Lord is to have courage. To be strong in the Lord is to be able to endure. To be strong in the Lord is to have hope. To be strong in the Lord means we can walk in that love. This all comes from being strong in the in the Lord. We can have trust, courage, endurance, hope. We can have love. Verse 11 says these words. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles means the methods. He has many methods, methods, but we are to be strong in the Lord. We are to be strong for service. We are to be strong for fighting. We are to be strong in the sufferings. Why? Because he... He has many methods methods to come against you and we are to put on that whole armour, the whole armour of God that we may be able to stand against the ways of the wicked one. So we're on to verse twelve here and the apostle or the apostle Paul just says to the Ephesian church, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood and again but against Principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the battle of our life. This, we wrestle. That word wrestle means we're wrestling not against the world system, but we're, we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in the world system. We are wrestling against the powers of evil evil forces out there evil agendas just it's just pure evil so we need to know what we're wrestling against you know the devil is a spirit he's a spirit so we're wrestling remember years ago there was wrestling matches many many years ago big daddy and giant haystacks we know it was all set up it was fake but this isn't fake this is real children of God. This is real born again Christian. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood or some commentators say blood and flesh but against principalities, powers, wickedness in high places. High places. That's where the wickedness is. In the heavenly realms. 
Verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. He's talking about standing here. He goes on, We know that we're living in an evil day, so we need to stand firm on God's word. We need to stand firm on his truth. We need to stand firm on what he has said in his word. Verse 14, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That word stand implies to be of a steadfast mind. We are to be steadfast in our mind. We are not to waver. It means do not waver. We are not to waver. We are to stand in his truth. We are to stand not in our truth, or what the world deems as truth, but we're to stand in his truth. We're to stand in his strength, not in our own fleshly strength, not in our carnal nature. We're to stand in his strength. We're to stand with our loins girt about with truth. The loin earlier means the belt, the buckler. So we have to have our loins, our waist, girded about with the belt of truth with that buckler, with the truth of his word. John seventeen seventeen says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. God's word is truth. So we are to be continually meditating upon his word. Joshua tells us, Joshua 1 and 8, Meditate upon my word day and night. We are to meditate on the word of God, for his word is truth. Psalm 18 verse 30 says this, as for God, his way is perfect. Not imperfect, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. This word has been tried throughout the centuries and it's still the truth. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. We must start with the truth. The truth is his word. The truth is is him, Christ, he epitomizes, he epitomizes truth. Verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. So when the Roman soldiers, this is an image of a Roman soldier here, Paul's showing us, a Roman soldier, soldier had his feet shod, his feet had these spikes, the shoes had these spikes in them that they could be grounded in the earth. So we had to be grounded, ground it, stand. It has this imagery of standing firm in Christ. We had to stand firm in His Word. We had to stand firm in the Gospel. We had to stand firm to have our feet shod with the preparation of the Gospel of peace. We are not to fear what the enemy fires at us. We are to stand in Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. He tells us in his word, Peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit, as Paul said to Tom Timothy, of power and of love. And have a sound mind. So we are to walk in the truth of his word. We are to walk in his strength. We are to walk in that preparation of the gospel of peace. We know gospel means good news. Good news of peace. Verse 16. Above all taking the shield of faith. Wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. What is the fiery darts of the wicked one? Lies, discouragement. He'll just keep at you. He'll want to wear you down. He'll want to attack your self-esteem, your self-worth. These fiery darts that he continually fires. But we had to put on, we had to put above all taking the shield of faith. That faith that Christ has given us. That faith that Paul speaks about in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace 
you are saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a gift of God that he's given you that faith. It is a gift of God. So we're to put on the shield of faith. The Roman soldiers used to have a wooden shield, but then to put a, a leather thing through it, over the top of it, over the shield, to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And we are to do the same. We are to put on our armour. We are to put on the whole armour of God. We are to put on that shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? God's word. The truth of his word. The truth of his word. And take notice as you go into 17, he's, Paul says these words, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The helmet of salvation. Put that helmet over your head. Put it over your head. Know that you're a child of God. Know that he is with you. That he is for you and not against you. Know that Christ is in you. Child of God, we are need to know. We need to know who we are in Christ. He goes on to say, take the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword of the Spirit? What do we wield? We don't wield our words. We wield the sword of the Spirit. We wield the word of God. So when he's coming into you, when the enemy's coming to you with his lies, saying that you're not good enough, say that you're the righteousness of Christ. Say that you're not worthy. Say that you're more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me and died for me. If the people coming in and say that God is not real, oh, you know he's real because he lives within you and you just quench them fiery darts with the word of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Redeemed, redeemed how I love to proclaim it and keep speaking the word of God to the enemy. Didn't Christ in Matthew always quote the word? He went, it is written, it is written, it is written. So that's what we are to do. We are to take the helmet of salvation, that, hel that salvation that Christ has given you through faith. We are to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and we are to cut off the serpent's head, as it were. Cut it off. Don't even listen to the lies. Cut them off with the word of God. Don't even let them get in there. Cut them off. Verse 18 says this, Praying above all with all power and supplication in the Spirit, and watching therefore with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Pray, have that continually Christ on your mind, that when the enemy comes in, you just say, Lord, come, Father God, I submit to you, and I resist the devil, and he has to flee. He has to flee. Pray the blood over yourself. Pray with all supplication. Pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. Pray until you start praying. The Bible tells us that the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You're righteous, not in your own strength, as Paul tells us to be, but in the strength of the Lord, his strength. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 19.